Hello, apa kabar? Kabar baik? I hope my Indonesian isn't too bad for you. If you don't know who I am, my name is John and Lenny was my Indonesian teacher when I was studying in Nottingham. So then Lenny always answered all of my questions. And even though today I know that this is not live, I do hope that if you have any questions, you can feel free to send them to Lenny or you can also email me and my address will be added below. Or you can even type a comment very quickly on the YouTube link below. Today we are talking about effective communication for English. And I'm not sure how good or bad your English is, but wherever you are in your English journey, I hope that this is helpful for you. Let me say very quickly that I'm not an expert of English. I simply help people to speak and communicate better. But I'm not a professor, I'm not a teacher. And I hope that it's only through my experiences learning different languages that you are able to learn. Let me share a quick story about how bad I can be in a language. When I was going to volunteer in Peru, I had to learn this language called Spanish. And during that time, I tried to go to Spain to practice a bit of my Spanish. And before I went there, I had studied for about six months from a textbook. But when I was in Spain, I tried asking one of the locals there, where is the toilet or donde esta el baño? And when he replied me, I couldn't understand him at all. So I still ended up going to find the toilet on my own. The point of this story really is to show that even though today I might seem good in English, there are other languages I've learned that I haven't been very good at. But out of those learnings, I've gained a few principles that I hope to be able to share with you today. So let's go quickly into the three principles of effective communication. First and foremost, good effective communication is two-way. This means that you don't simply talk in one direction to someone, but you talk in a dialogue, meaning that you talk, someone listens. He talks, you listen. So you do not speak into a vacuum or nothingness, but you speak to someone, you speak with someone. Good effective language communication is two-way. It ensures, uh, first and foremost, that you are understood, uh, but secondly, it also ensures that the other person understands you. And this is very important. Very often, we focus a lot on how we sound when we speak, but we don't focus on whether or not we are understood. And there's no point speaking great English if no one understands you. So two-way language communication ensures that both parties understand each other. Secondly, you see from this picture here uh, that this was my team when I was working with Google. Uh, before you say, oh, wow, Google, I was also sacked from Google. Yep, I was sacked. And I don't want you to think like I'm this great guy because the reason I was sacked was because I couldn't understand or follow what my leader said. And when, when my leader tried to talk to me, I would constantly interrupt her and not bother understanding. This shows how important two-way communication is. Not only speaking, 
but making sure that you are understood. Secondly, we need to listen as we speak. You need to listen as you are speaking. Very often, uh, you might speak, but then you forget uh, to listen. And listening comes in the very small ways. For example, if you see that someone's getting bored by what you say, then you need to adjust what you're saying. So it's really about leaning and learning as you're speaking. It's about adapting to the other person as you are speaking. It is not about just saying everything that you've memorized and remembered in your head, like all the grammar structures, everything. It's not just about that. It's about adapting. You know, I remember that when I was learning Indonesian with Lenny, I would always try to remember all these things in my head, but I couldn't. And then uh, she would ask me something and I would give the model answer, but then she wouldn't understand what I was trying to say. So for English, we also need to lean into the person that we are speaking to and learn as we are speaking. Let's talk about the two aspects of effective communication. The first aspect is delivery, which is how you speak. The second aspect is content, which is what you say. Firstly, in terms of delivery, imagine if today I spoke like this. Hello, my name is John and you should listen to me today because I want to share with you on effective communication. You would fall asleep. You wouldn't want to listen to me at all. But instead, if you vary your voice, it becomes a lot more different. So how if I shared with you a story that used the different aspects of your voice, like your tone, your pace, your pitch, that ensures that you are able to really engage the other person as you speak. Let's try an example. Three years ago, I was driving a Volkswagen Polo up a mountain in Iceland. And this was a very scary mountain. It was very high and I was very scared as I prepared to come down. There was a heavy snowstorm and winds were blowing at speeds of about 34 kilometers per hour. And then suddenly, bam, I knocked into something. All around me, the car started alerting me. Bam, bam, bam. And I started being very, very scared. How was that? You can see that in this particular example, as I was sharing the story, I was using three different things. Firstly, it was the pace. So I was going faster and slower. I was also using my pitch rising as I was getting more excited and lowering whenever I wanted to make a point. Then I was also using my volume. I raised my volume when I wanted to emphasize something and I lowered my volume when I wanted you to listen even harder. Today in Indonesian or even in English, varying your voice ensures that people are engaged with what you say. Secondly, pause. Sometimes we seem very uncomfortable with pausing. And I think it's really because uh, we are scared. We are scared of silence. Today, you might be tempted to use things like um, uh, ah, as you're speaking, 
But why not just take a deep breath and pause? You do need to feel the silence when you don't know what to speak. Let me tell you the truth. Sometimes I don't know what to say, right? Even in this conversation. But I pause. And that's really effective. Lastly, use other aspects of your voice. Use other aspects. So as Albert Maravian saw in his study on how a message impact was communicated, he found that there were three aspects, the vocal, the verbal, and then the non-verbals. As you can see, the verbal aspect, which is what you say, only was 7% of the message's impact. Whereas the non-verbals, for example, your gestures, your face expressions, your eyes even, <laughs> express 55% of the message's impact. So use other aspects of communication, such as your hands. Yeah, Your hands are great for communication. To make a point, to be able to say something powerful, you can start using your hands. And then your facial expressions as well. So today, if I leaned in and started making eye contact with you, you would start feeling like I was really, really, really interested in you. And this is not by accident. The eyes are the windows to one's soul. And the truth is that when you start looking into the eyes of someone, you start establishing great connection and trust. This is a picture of Iceland and how scared I was as I went up that mountain. The reason I share this picture is because I want to show you that communication is not just about you speaking. It is about you expressing the emotions that are within you. It's not really about what you say, but also how you say it. Let's go on to the content. So today you might tell me, I have limited vocabulary. I'm not good at English. I only know some words in English. That's okay. That's really okay. Because as you know, I went to Spain speaking English like a baby. Sorry, speaking Spanish like a baby. Some of the five-year-olds spoke better Spanish than me. But despite that, I was able to teach them. And this wasn't by chance. You can see here one of the Peruvian kids that I taught. And he is one of my favorite students because he was always so attentive. He taught me that it is not how great your English is or how many words you know in English, but it's about how simple you can keep it. Today, if you are scared of using English, try talking to yourself. I'm not kidding. Like when I was in England and I was trying to keep up with my Spanish, I had nobody to talk to. So I started talking to myself. Today around you in Kupang, you might not see people who might be able to speak with you regularly in English, then try talking to yourself. You can talk to yourself about the weather, talk to yourself about how you feel. But the priority is really about using English in every single conversation that you have. You know, sometimes you and I might be scared of making mistakes. As we grow older, many of us are scared. We start thinking, what will people think of us if I say something wrongly? But the truth is that it doesn't matter what people think of you. It matters what you think of yourself. And with English, 
it's important that you try to immerse yourself in the language. Drown yourself in English. Start changing your phone's default language to English. Start listening to English music. Start listening to English news on the BBC. This ensures that you are continually improving your language skills. And so now you might ask me, okay, so how do I make myself understood if I have limited vocabulary? Keep it simple. Imagine if today you were asked to speak to the Indonesian president, Jokowi, right? And he asked, hey, I want to talk to you today. You wouldn't want to waste his time, right? So just keep it simple, keep it short, and keep it sweet. You know, when I went to Peru, I didn't know future tense, past tense, conjugations. I didn't even know how to write proper Spanish. But I managed to communicate because I kept things very simple. I just used present tense and I just used simple words. Today, you might feel like your English vocabulary is very limited. But I want to encourage you to continue trying to use that and to slowly build it up. Rather than trying desperately to learn new words and to think like, I'm never going to be good enough. Just keep trying with what you already know. And that is going to help you. Let's now move on to the everyday uses of English. First and foremost, I want to give you a quick exercise. I want you to try introducing yourself. So if you could just pause the video right here now, try writing out a one minute introduction of yourself. And in this introduction, I want you to tell me about yourself. But it's not just about like where you study, where you come from, where you live. It's about, more importantly, the contribution that you want to make. The contribution that you want to make. For example, I could introduce myself as, hi, my name is John. I'm a social worker in Singapore. But that would be pretty boring, isn't it? But instead, if I just focused on the contribution then it will sound different. Hi, my name is John, and today I focus on helping young people to thrive and not just survive. I want to build the conditions that help them to flourish by helping them to understand, unlock, and unleash their fullest potential, giving voice to what is within them so that they can do greater good for the world. You can see here that just focusing on the unique contribution that you want to make is going to help you to grow greatly in your introduction skills. You need to know your listener. Know your listener. This is very important. Very often, very, very often, we tend to speak as if we were speaking to a bird. I'm guilty of that. I don't care who is listening to me. I just talk. So the important thing is to talk with someone rather than to someone. Talk with him or her. Secondly, you can start using a story. You don't have to remember great facts because you have so many stories that you can share with the world and use those stories. You are the expert of your own life. You don't need someone else's story when you're trying to introduce yourself. Thirdly, keep it short and sweet. If Jokowi was going to talk to you, you wouldn't want to waste his time. Keep it between two to three minutes whenever you try to introduce yourself. Fourthly, see it as a gift. This was something my host made me when I was living in England, and it was Beautiful. Similarly, a speech or an introduction is very special because you get to give something of 
yourself. Your listener leaves behind his time, something that they will never get back. So make sure that as they are listening to you, they are able to take something away. For example, in the introductions that I give of myself, it is not just about me. It's about what I can do for you, for them, for your listener. So think in terms of what can I do for you rather than what can you do for me. Let's go on to spontaneous speaking. This often happens. For example, Lenny might ask you a question in class, you might not know how to answer. Someone might ask you, hey, will you be my girlfriend? And you might end up not knowing what to say. This happens often. What can we do to overcome that? I think firstly, it's about breathing. Learn to just take a deep breath and breathe. Secondly, think, what is your most important point? Secondly, when speaking spontaneously, always think about what your most important point is. You know, very often, we tend to go around and around and around in circles. And that can be very tempting, especially when we don't know what to say. We feel like there's an urge to fill up time. But just think. What's the purpose of what I'm trying to say? And what am I trying to say? So just one point, one purpose, say it, keep it short, keep it sweet, and you're finished. That makes a spontaneous speaking opportunity much, much easier. Most importantly, during spontaneous speaking, relax. I know that can be hard, especially when you feel like you're being put on the spot and suddenly everyone is waiting for me to give an answer. But just hold on. Take a deep breath, relax, calm down. Remember, nobody is going to kill you for saying something wrong. So relax. Just relax. You know, in closing, I want to share this picture of my classmates when I was in Nottingham. As you might know, I come from Singapore, which is just a small little, small, small little red dot, right? It's just a small red dot. And sometimes that can be very scary. But I saw that when I was able to communicate using the principles that I've shared with you. It made things easier. Focusing on making myself understood, keeping things short and sweet, and simply focusing on making everything I said a gift rather than just about me, made things so easy during my time in England. Today, you might live in Kupang, Indonesia, and you might think, what's the point of learning English? I'm never ever going to use English in my life anyway. But I want to tell you that today, English is a global language. Whether or not you like it, it is used in most countries in the world when you are flying, and English is the bridge that connects you in Kupang, Indonesia, to me in Singapore, to my friends in England, 10,000 miles away. Language connects us. And so today, the final thing that I want to leave it with you is don't give up on trying and getting things wrong in English. You don't need to be perfect in English. 
our greatest failure is not that we try and fail. It is that you fail to even try. So keep trying, keep working. And I hope that someday I'll be able to see you in person. Thank you.